word that I want to share um, this afternoon, and um, I kind of touched on it last week, but I just want to sort of press it in a little bit more, because this word has been sitting heavy on my heart all week, and it just keeps increasing, and I said to David, um, this thing won't go away, and he was like, like, well, just speak it, you know, and just share it, and um, if you have your Bibles with you, it's in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, so 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, and I'll read it. Um, I'm sorry I'm not fancy like my husband. I may have been more educated, but I don't do slides. Um, so I, I'm just going to read it from my Bible. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen to the glory of God through us. So I'll read it again. It says, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen to the glory of God through us. And in, in his very simplicity, the only word that I have to give to you today, which I feel that God has been pressing for this house, is that whatever God has promised you, it shall come to pass. Whatever he has spoken over your life is going to come to pass. And I love what um, Vanessa was saying. You know, sometimes in our walk, we go through circumstances and everything around us looks like it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Everything in the natural. And even during praise and worship today, I was praying at the very beginning because I felt like God wants to open our eyes today. I felt like God wants to open our eyes so that we can see his vision. We begin to see things the way that he sees them. That we begin to believe the way that he believes. It's so awesome, you know, like you can come to a church and yes, you have people that are here who will believe in you. But I want to tell you today that there is no one that believes in you the way that God believes in you. He didn't give you that promise because you were perfect. He didn't give you that promise because you had everything. He gave you that promise because he said, I see you and I see what I have for you and I see what I've given you and it is his and it is not ours. And many times the problem that we have is that when God gives us something, we take a hold of it and we say, oh, it's mine. And we become very smeagle. We're like, oh, it's so precious. It's mine. It's mine. It's not for anybody else. But I love what Glenn was sharing. When the blessing comes, it is to bless others. It is to pour out a blessing upon somebody else's life. And I just want to say that whatever God has promised, it shall come to pass. You know why? In Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, He who began a good work in you, yes. he who, who began it, he started it, he's going to finish it. Yes. He is faithful. Philippians 1 6 says, He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Yes. When we are unfaithful, he is faithful. Yes. When we go sideways, he still stays on there and he says, I know what I have for you. I love that scripture in Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for hope and a future. That is his word. When God spoke, you know, spoke those words, he wasn't kidding around. He is very serious about what he speaks. He's very serious about what he's promised you. He's very serious about when he says, I have a calling on your life. And I know that every one of us in this room, we have gone through moments, we have gone through times where we have gone through valleys, as, as was shared by Alan last week. We have gone through valleys, and some of us might be in a valley right now. Yes. And when we look around, it looks like, I don't have the money to do this. I don't have the, the smarts to do this. I don't have the influence. I don't have the networks. Lord, I don't have what it takes to do this. And you know what God is saying? No, you don't, but I do. Yes. You don't, but I do. And he's saying, and, and even, you know, throughout this whole journey for Breakthrough Church Springfield, and I don't know how much you know about this church and its history, but throughout this whole journey, it's like there have been simple words that God has been saying. From the beginning of when we came back and we started and relaunched this church, the Lord said, I am with you. I am with you. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have gone through times where we have been hounded and we have been, you know, people throwing things and hurling things and persecuted and people wanting to say, God is gone, he's not with you. But in the midst of that, all we can hear is God saying, I am with you. I am with each one of you. And I just want to take a moment maybe just to share a little bit about our journey in the last six months because it has not been a pretty journey. It's been a very difficult journey. But as has been shared so often in this house and from this pulpit, in, in the difficult times is when you see God. Yes. In the darkest moments is where you see the brightest light because God is the only one who can bring light to such a dark place. Yes. Um, last year, uh, we had been building here in, in um, Brisbane uh, for, for many years. And we went to Tonga and we did missions. And, and then we were called back to come and relaunch this church. And this church was not in a good place. 
And anyone who was here, Vanessa, you started when it was just maybe going like this. <laughs> it was not in a good place. And, um, and I just want to share my own personal journey in that because it is the promises of God that has gotten me through. It is what God has spoken that has brought me to this place to where I can now see the end at the beginning. I can see the finish. I can see what God has. And um, through this whole journey, what happened was there were so many um, accusations and persecution and people saying things and our integrity was questioned. Our leadership was put down and so many things. And, and you know, in the midst of it, I'm sitting in Tonga in my little, it wasn't a hut, it was actually a beautiful house. Thank you, Lord. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, I was sitting there, and, and when all this kind of turmoil was happening, I just cried out to God, and I said, God, did you not promise us this? Did you not speak this? Did you not say this? I just need to hear from you. What did you say? Because for me, if I can just anchor myself in what he has said, everything else doesn't matter. If I can just hear what he wants to say and hear what he speaks to me, for me, that is like, oh, I don't care what happens. I don't care if I have money or I don't have a house or whatever happens. I don't care. So I came before God and I said, God, did you not promise these things? Did you not speak these things to me and my husband about, about Australia, about the church, about a global ministry? Da -de -da -de -da -de -da. And I said, Lord, all I need is to hear from you. All I need is for you to speak to me one more time and tell me that, that this was you. And throughout the whole process, and I, and I want to say honestly... It was a real process of having to come before God and say, God, I'm willing to throw everything out, even if it wasn't you. If I made a mistake, I'm happy to throw it all out just as long as it is you. As long as I hear you, as long as I know it's you. If I've made a mistake, all good, you know? It's like, who am I to go against the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings? And so I came before him and I said, Lord, what have you promised? What did you speak? What, would, what did you speak over this house? And then throughout this whole process, you know, here I'm crying and I'm saying, God, this and da, da, da. The Lord spoke and he said, what I have promised, it shall come to pass. Yeah. And I sat there and I said, Lord, that's all I needed. I just needed to hear you. I just needed to hear your voice. I just needed to know that, that what you had spoken was true and it was, it was not a lie. That, you were, that I wasn't making it up. That I wasn't making this all up in my own mind and, and my own ambition. And the only thing that he said was... He said, you know, what I have spoken is what I have spoken. What I have promised is what I have promised, and it shall come to pass. And then it became a whole journey of walking that out. Because, you know, it's one thing to come to church and to hear and know that God has a plan for you. It's one thing to know that he has promised something to you. And many of you, you know, I, I know of women who, um, who God said to them, you're going to have a baby. And they're like barren for like nine years. And they're going, how can I have a baby? But I want to tell you, God's word is true. Whatever he has spoken to you, it shall come to pass. When we came back as part of that journey, when we came back, one of the things that God spoke to us before, and he spoke to me before we left Tonga, and I don't know if you know anything about Tonga, but yeah, third world country, you don't have, you know, you earn like 80 cents an hour or something for the work that you do, and you work 80 hours a week, and you still don't make what any of us make in a day. So um, finances for me was one thing, and I said, Lord, we're going back to a church that pretty much doesn't exist. We're going back to, um, I don't know what. And I said, you know, what are we going to do? And the Lord said, don't worry. He said, don't worry, I'll take care of your finances. And I, and I don't know about any other woman here, but, you know, finances for me has always been like, okay, you know, you want to make sure we're going to be taken care of. Your kids can eat, blah, blah, blah. So when we came back, uh, one of the things that the Lord said is, I'm going to give you a job. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And he goes, no, I'm going to give you a job. And I'm like, okay, great. I want to tell you, man, it took three months for this particular job to come through. And in that three months, I was like up and down. I was like, I have faith. And then I'm down. And then I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, is this? And I remember being in my room and just like crying out to God. And actually getting, I'm sorry, but I, I didn't get angry at him. But I was just like, did you not say? Didn't you say that this was going to happen? And all he said was, can you just settle down? And I went, oh, okay, okay, you know, I'll settle down, I'll settle down. But he came through, but it's been a whole process. And, and to be honest, he's taking care of our finances. I mean, we're not mega rich right now, but I see it, you know, and we'll be millionaires one day. But it's whatever, <laughs> whatever God says is going to come to pass. But one thing that I've learned is that we can know that God has promised us something. We know that he's promised us, you know, a good life. We know that he's called us to be a preacher. We know that he's called us to impact and change the world, as you say. But how does that happen? 
And there were just very simple things that the Lord through this journey has taken me through that I want to just share with you today on how you can align yourself so that the blessing will fall. How you can align yourself so that the promises shall come to pass. Because I tell you the truth, there is nothing wrong with God's end. He is faithful. He's ready. And you know, I was sharing this with our connect group. It's like he's, he's ready to pour out on us. But there's just a little adjustment that we need to make. Just little alignments that we need to make so that he can begin to release everything. And the first thing that I want you to write down somewhere right in your spirit is humility. Humility is key to walking in the promises of God. It is not enough for us to say, God's going to, you know, give me a global ministry. Yay! And then we become all proud and we begin to, be, you know, to sort of take it on board ourselves. As it has to walk, we have to walk in humility. Because when we're humble, you know what that means? It means that the one who is faithful is going to do it through us. Because many times, whatever he's promised us, and I don't know about you, but I've done this. He's promised me something, and I've taken it on board. And I'm, I don't know, I'm very resourceful. I can do lots of things. And I pick up, you know, all my skills, and I'm like, right, God, let's go and do this. And through that whole journey, God says, you know what? I, I love it that you've got skills. I love it that you're determined. But can you just lay it aside so that I can come through? Because it is faithful. He is the faithful one. And all he wants to do is come through us. So I found that we have to be humble. We have to really humble ourselves to walk in the things that God has promised us. Amen? Yeah. 